Welcome to the tarot for December 2023. Uh, we just enjoyed Thanksgiving and we are moving deeper into the season of snow and cold and rest. Rest for Mother Nature and for humanity. As I prepared to do the tarot, I kept seeing and hearing comments here and there about the collusion of government and business. So that became one of my questions. Then the situation regarding the immigration occurring in all of the Western countries kept coming to mind. So that became another question. Over the past four months, I've been tracking what was happening with the spirit of the people in the Western countries. And last month, the cards indicated that we were dealing with a setback, a setback that required more time to consider and process. So this month, I changed my approach just a little from drawing a card to see how are the people doing to drawing an animal card to see what message the animal kingdom has for us at this time. So let's begin. So the specific questions asked were, what is the best way to think about and deal with the big global corporations running the world at this time? And the card drawn was number 14 of the major arcana, the temperance card. The second question, what do the cards have to say regarding the floods of people now pouring into so many of the Western countries? And the card drawn was number six, the lovers, also of the major arcana, meaning it's a, a major issue. Question number three, was what message does the animal kingdom have for people living in the U.S. and the Western countries at this moment in time in 2023? And the card drawn was number eight, the otter. So let's look a little more deeply at these cards. Question number one, what is the best way to think about and deal with the big global corporations running the world at this time. And we have here card number 14 of the major arcana, temperance. So my first reaction when I saw this card was, oh no, that card has nothing to do with corporate business. However, as I read and thought and considered more deeply, I began to see that not only was it entirely relevant, it was suggesting something that touched the deepest core of what we are dealing with in our world today. Temperance is one of the cardinal virtues, and many people think of it as meaning patience or the practice of self-restraint. Those with a history of alcohol might see it as indicating an avoidance of alcohol or alcohol in moderation. But in the tarot system, this card means, listen up here, changing the world and having fun doing it. Changing the world and having fun doing it. And it turned out, actually, that fun and play seemed to be a theme that ran through all of the cards pulled for all three of the questions this month. I think we're supposed to be enjoying life. So when you look at the temperance card, you see an angel standing with one foot on land and the other in water. He's wearing a long white robe with a triangle inside a square embroidered on his breastplate. And there are letters J-H-V-H above the breastplate. The angel has large fiery wings that extend outside the framework of the card. There's a sun symbol over the third eye area and he's pouring water from one cup into another. 
On the right side of the card, there's a field of iris flowers. And on the other side, a long path that leads to some blue mountains on a distant horizon. There are rocks both in the water and along the edge of the water. The sun is hanging over the mountains and it's difficult to tell whether it's going up or down. You know, is the day beginning or is, is our time beginning or is our time ending? Um, and the entire sky is gray. So this card, this card symbolizes the great work. The great work is the work of creating a wonderful world in which everyone and everything is treasured and taken care of. This is often referred to as the marriage of heaven and earth. And it points to the task of building a reality system that works beautifully and nurtures all of life. Of course, bringing heaven to earth is not something that can be done in a day or even a year, and the long path leading to the mountains in the distance represents this effort as an undertaking that is so big, so comprehensive, that it will become the work of a lifetime. Since our question is about how to think about and deal with the big global corporations running the world, the temperance card indicates that there's no quick, easy answer. Since corporations are the structures, the institutions that bring us the food, clothing, cars, furniture, electricity, education, and medicines that we need in life, doing away with them in one gigantic swoop would be the same as shooting ourselves in the foot. We would be without the things we need to keep our lives healthy and well-functioning. So the temperance card tells us that transformation and patience are the order of the day. And the act of pouring the water of life from one cup into another cup symbolizes a new way of organizing and holding our lifestyles, a new flow of life-giving substances, a new way of supplying ourselves, a new cup from which to drink that offers us a taste of comfort and function. The letters on the angel's breastplate, J-H-V-H, are often interpreted to be the name of God. But in ancient times, they stood for the power to be self-sufficient and self-existent. This indicates that we may have to take responsibility for ourselves, become self-sufficient, and find new ways to fill our needs. We would have to back away from those corporations a little at a time while becoming self-sufficient. And that would both allow corporations to change and it would force them to change. The angel itself represents a message that says there's no way around your current challenge. And the only way to deal with it is to come to grips with the situation. Shall I say that again? There's no way around a current challenge. The only way to deal with it is come to grips with it. The situation created by the big global corporations is one in which money flows uphill, uphill against the force of gravity. It flows uphill to the top of the power pyramid where a few ultra rich hang on to every dollar. Great masses of people have become slaves to a paycheck that does not cover the true costs of living. The big banks are willing to lend money to fill in the gaps of what is needed, but the interest charged results in ever greater debt. 
putting people, their property, and their lives at ever greater risk. The result is the slow but inexorable loss of property that is gradually handed over to the corporation or the state. What will we do when the entire planet is full with homeless people? Will we look at the corporations and recognize that this is not the best way to organize a civilization? The angel is standing on land and in the water. And this represents the need to take a stand on firm ground while recognizing the power of our emotions symbolized by the water, which may become rocky. Those emotions may become rocky. I think they already are rocky. As indicated by the rocks in and along the edge of the water. However, with our feet on the ground, we could then direct those emotions in a productive way. The iris flowers back this up for they are the symbol of an open consciousness that expresses a vision of understanding, honor, beauty, and the grandeur that is possible when people work together. They create grand ideas, grand arrangements, and grand structures characterized by great artistry and vision. The iris is part of the eye and having a vision of what you would like to create in your life is critical. And the iris has a message. It says, don't be shy, don't be small, open to a grand vision. The triangle within the square on the breastplate points to the need for masculinity, that's the square, and femininity, that's the triangle, to work together. Male and female symbols represent contradictions and tensions. And this card tells us to seize these contradictions and work with them until we understand them in every detail, including the hidden aspects and drivers. Because only when we are able to grasp these hidden factors and drivers, will we be able to see the true changes needed? In other words, we are not to waste time and energy changing the behaviors. We are to remain watchful, open, and observant until we understand the driving forces, which are the feeling energies driving the behaviors. It is when we understand the feelings driving the behaviors that we will be successful at changing things. The small bright sun over the third eye symbolizes the coming together of will and vision to overcome what seems to be fate or less than desirable circumstances. And the gray sky calls for detachment from old ways and lifestyles, yet warns against indifference or behaviors that are reactive and without conscious thinking and planning. The robe worn by the angel is white, and white indicates a starting point, like starting with a blank sheet of paper. It symbolizes the need to explore a new kind of intellectual territory whole new way of thinking about the world and how to set it up. Trying to imagine life without corporations or with completely transformed corporations would be a tall order and one that many people would likely have difficulty doing at first. The task would be greatly simplified and transformation could be very smooth if one by one, we moved into taking responsibility for feeding ourselves and one another, making sure everyone had a roof over their head, and 
everyone had access to heating, cooling, and communication. Little by little, we would see that everyone is being taken care of. The big corporations are transforming and the reality system is morphing to a whole new level of existence. And as temperance suggests, perhaps we would even enjoy making our way to this new way of thinking and doing. So keywords for the temperance card are economy. Big corporations are big economy. Moderation frugality, management, there's all kinds of management in those big corps, accommodation, things connected to religions and priesthoods, corporate way of life is kind of like the new religion and the CEOs and CFOs and CTOs and et cetera, those are the new priests. Disunion, competing interests, and self-examination of conscience. This card calls forth our inner teacher and instincts for self-preservation. It is related to Sagittarius and the period of time from November 21st to December 21st. And it invites us to become even more of who and what we truly are. Question number two. What do the cards have to say regarding the floods of people now pouring into so many of the Western countries? The card drawn in answer to this question was number six of the major arcana, the lovers. And I have to admit that when I saw what had been drawn, I wanted to put it back and draw again. Once again, I just did not see this card as relevant to the question, nor did I think love was possible in a situation involving millions of illegal and possibly threatening immigrants. But I honored the draw and I ended up with a few surprises. So the lover's card represents, could we get a card more appropriate for this question? The lover's card represents the core principles of the art and craft of relationship. The art and craft of relationship. It represents the pairing of everything with its opposite. And it refers to paradise lost and then its rediscovery. In looking at the card, we see two figures, a male and a female, both naked and both with a small tree immediately behind them. In the background between them is a single, very pointed red mountain with a bit of blue sky around it. But above the two figures, there are some very dark clouds. Above the clouds is an angel wearing a voluminous dark purple robe with many folds and shadows in it and with intensely red wings extending beyond the frame of the cart. Above the angel is a big, bright, beautiful sun and the two human figures are standing on a green landscape with a number of ruts or folds in it. The lover's card is all about polarities. And the male and female are the perfect representation of polarity. They are both naked, which symbolizes the naked truth of life as it is. The truth about life in any reality system is that all things move forward when opposites come together, creating an imbalance. 
and some sort of resolution or accommodation must be created in order to return to balance. Since our question is about the numbers of people flooding into the countries of the West, the message here is that a huge imbalance has existed and is now needing to be recognized and resolved. Are we being forced to recognize the have nots of the world and to rectify the situation? If we do not, will we all end up in the category of have nots? Does the imbalance go even deeper to reveal a sinister will deliberately trying to destroy the Western way of life? Why? What must be faced there? The tree behind the female is the tree of life, which represents the element of earth and symbolizes mother nature. The tree behind the male is the tree of knowledge, which represents the element of fire. So we have earth and fire and is the symbol of will. The two figures are standing on a green landscape indicating they do not have much experience or skill in handling their situation. And this is a warning to be heeded since we are talking about a large, very global set of challenges with these floods of people. Without experience, we have little wisdom. Without wisdom, it's easy to succumb to fear. When fear reigns, all is lost. So to avoid fear, look for practical common sense approaches. There's a snake wrapped around the tree of life and the snake represents consciousness. Consciousness is frequency, spiraling frequency. And the snake is, represents that. It is consciousness that is at the core of nature in all its forms and all its activities. This consciousness can be of a low frequency or it can wind its way upward into the higher frequencies. However, to wind its way upward, it must be backed and sustained by willpower and the fire of desire. When will is absent, the consciousness will be without direction. And if the will is of low quality, consciousness will be used to achieve meaningless or even hurtful outcomes that do not sustain a situation or the people in it. That red pointed mountain between the two figures indicates a big problem driven by many passions, but if faced and handled well, will result in reaching a peak of joy, healing, and satisfaction for all. The difficulty of getting to that peak of joy and satisfaction is symbolized by the very dark gray clouds hanging low between the male and female figures. The clouds indicate cloudy thinking, a pessimistic outlook, and an inability to get beyond biases and fears. So the question to ask is, who or what is generating the clouds? Is that you? The biases and fears are backed up by the voluminous purple robe worn by the angel. The color purple hints at the need to embrace a new spirit of living. But the many folds and the shadows they create point to the unfolding of unexpected events and the presence of shadowy attitudes bringing forth all kinds of dark moments that will have to be dealt with. The angel's hands are spread wide, partly to welcome all, 
into the problem solving needed between the two sides. And the hands also serve as a connecting link between the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. This tells us that it is possible to resolve the imbalances in the situation, but not without opening our hands and actively trying to create those possibilities. What is needed is an attitude of abundance for all that incorporates a whole new way of living backed by a whole new spirit of adventure and getting out of the box. The angel is wearing a headdress made of leaves. The leaves represent nature. And this underscores the nature symbolized in the tree of life behind the female. But since the leaves are on the head of the angel, they point more to the nature of thought that comes from everyone involved in the imbalanced situation. Do we need to be aware of the kind of thinking being done by the people flooding into the various countries? Do we need to be aware of our own thinking? Why are they coming here? What do they hope will happen? Does their thinking have to be taken into account? Yes. Or the imbalance may not be resolved. The wings on the angel do not fit inside the framework of the card, indicating that the situation will call for solutions we have not thought of or haven't been open to in the past. Creativity will be needed as well as flexibility. If there is one thing wings require in order to fly, it is the ability to open and be flexible as well as to get above the situation in order to see a bigger picture. What is the bigger picture offered by floods of impoverished people coming into a country? Is it to see that not everyone has what they need to live? Is it to better understand the role of religion, banking, education, and government, as well as other institutions in our lives, and to assess whether or not these are destructive or constructive systems in their current form? The sun is shining beautifully and it fills the top of the card, indicating that many people are going to see things in a new light, a stronger light, a brighter light. And since the sun symbolizes success in our endeavors, it points to a massively positive outcome should we choose to work in a meaningful way toward handling the changes created by new people flooding in. We have been hearing about earth changes since the time of Edgar Cayce. So let me go off on a little sidetrack here. These changes that Casey talked about were supposed to bring floods and changes in the land. Are the floods of people moving to new lands, the predicted earth changes and their accompanying floods? If yes, and we bungle this change by fighting, by expressing floods of anger and hate, Will we end up creating chaos in the fields of energy that create and sustain all of us, resulting in actual volcanoes, earthquakes, and flooding? There are unknown correspondences that exist between our energies and the energies of earth and sky. The lover's card is related to the constellation of Gemini. And Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Gemini is an air sign representing thinking. And Mercury is all about communication. If we think only bad or fearful thoughts about the people flooding in, 
That is what our communications will become. If we take the lover's card seriously, our efforts must be to achieve a win-win situation for all. So the message to us is, this needs to be sorted out. So let's close this question with the keywords associated with the lover's card. And those keywords are attraction. A lot of people attracted to the US. Polarity. Beauty. Trials overcome. Foolish designs. Frustration. Incompatibility. Union of opposites. Triumph of love. Objectivity. People skills. Cheerfulness. Fun, sexuality, and disappointment. Question number three. What message does the animal kingdom have for the people living in the U.S. and the Western countries at this moment in time in 2023? And the card drawn here was number eight, the otter. The otter symbolizes woman medicine, playfulness, again, play playfulness, and the realized dream. Otter represents, quote, beauty, and get this, the side of us that creates a space for others to enter our lives without preconceptions and suspicions, end quote. Did I say that again? Otter represents beauty and the side of us that creates a space for others to enter our lives without preconceptions and suspicions, end quote. It tells us that playfulness and feminine energies are needed in order to bring balance into a situation. Wow, <laughs> the otter brings us quite a message after the two questions and the cards drawn earlier in the reading. It's the same theme all the way through. The otter is curious always playful, always moving, and very friendly. It symbolizes the absence of jealousy or catty attitudes. An otter will not fight unless it needs to defend its young. It asks us to examine our feelings about sharing our bounty with others and to establish a spirit of unity and working together without anger. The fact that Otter is all about the realized dream tells us that in order to realize our dreams, we must support others in achieving their dreams. And then all can enjoy and share the good life we've created for ourselves. The big fear that must be faced with this card is envy and fear of being replaced. Envy and fear of being replaced. Otter teaches another important lesson in living. It asks us to give up the addiction to worry, which is actually an addiction to drama. It tells us to let things unfold naturally and to have fun with whatever is unfolding. It advises all of us to stop hanging on to material goods, for these will not help us to become self-sustaining or eternal. And that's what we hope to practice coming to a material realm. It tells us that we can enjoy loving other people and their children and bask in their accomplishments as if they were our own. Since our question is, what message does the otter have for us? And the main focus of the otter is woman medicine. The questions we have to ask are, 
Where are the women who will stand for all of us? What is the perspective of women when it comes to balance in the world? When will these women speak? How will woman medicine be applied? Big questions. Otter stands for a world full of people coming together to honor the right of each person to be. The number eight associated with the otter symbolizes the need to find and maintain a reasonable balance between the material world and the spiritual world. And the eight is the number of fate of starting over something we've already heard in question number one above the angel wearing the white robe white being the blank sheet start over so the otter card advises us to move into the river of life and flow gently down the stream playing as we go and enjoying every moment so let's sum up what we've said above. Question number one was, what's the best way to think about and deal with the big global corporations running the world at this time? And the card drawn was number 14, the temperance card, a major arcana card indicating that the big global corporations are a major issue. The message of the temperance card is that we need to be changing the world and having fun doing it. It tells us in point blank language, there is no way around your current challenge. And the only way to deal with it is to come to grips with the situation. What is the situation? It is that the global corporations do not have our best interests at heart, yet they supply us with everything we need. Therefore, how do we move away from them without suffering severe privation? The temperance card advises starting over by taking responsibility for feeding, clothing, housing ourselves, and to enjoy doing so, which is certainly possible if we focus on the freedom from worry, attack, corruption, and other threats. Question number two was, what do the cards have to say regarding the floods of people pouring into so many of the Western countries? And the card drawn here was number six, the lover's Again, a major arcana card indicating that this is another major issue for us. The lovers represent the core principles of the art and craft of relationship. And since we are asking about floods of people coming into our countries, we are being reminded that we will have to use all of our people skills in order to achieve a win-win relationship. It will not work to say they have to change while we stay the same. We will all have to change and many unexpected things will unfold in the process. The card warns of cloudy thinking and biased decisions, but it tells of a new spirit of living and working together that's possible and that will address the serious imbalances between the life of those in the West who have plenty of food, water, housing, equipment, et cetera, et cetera, while those in other countries are never sure if there will be enough of any of those necessities. And question number three was, what, does the, what message does the animal kingdom have for the people living in the U.S. and Western countries at this moment in time, in 2023? And the card drawn here was number eight, the otter, a symbol of woman medicine, playfulness, 
and the realized dream. Again, the theme comes up of playfulness, enjoyment, and the possibility of creating a world where we are able to realize our dreams. Otter tells us that what is needed is woman medicine to bring balance and enjoyment to all. It encourages us to face our fears and to create space for others to enter our lives without preconceptions and suspicions. Instead, we are encouraged to create a spirit of unity that surrounds and supports all while honoring the right of each person to be and working out the details that will allow us to realize our dreams. So that's it for this month. Thank you for listening. And I hope you'll think deeply about the messages brought by each card. It looks like we're going to have to recreate our world. So be thinking about that and what that would take and what you have to give to the process. In the meantime, have a wonderful Christmas or whatever name you give to your holiday. And I'll see you next month at the start of a whole new year.